What we try and do when we make these videos of abandoned railways and canals is give you a good idea of what the landscape looks like today in its abandoned form. But perhaps more importantly, what we also try and do is bring you the stories of the, the engineers that made these and some of the really crazy ideas that they came up with. So today's story, you find us on the Devon and Cornwall border and it really fits into that remit of some crazy engineering and really beautiful landscaping. Welcome to the Bewed Canal. I'm Paul. And I'm Rebecca. Our journey started on the northernmost tip of the northernmost branch. It was far too windy to speak here, but this is the Tamar Lower Lake, built to supply the entire canal with water. I suspect the landscape here has changed quite a lot, but there is still a lot here to see. Anyway, let's head down this branch. It's a bit less windy and we're in for an unplanned surprise. So we've just come down from the uh, Tamar Lower Lake, the original feeder. I always thought that this arm of the canal was just for uh, the water supply, but actually, of course, straight away we found Verworthy Wharf, which implies obviously it was active and actively used. Um, There's even a sign here that says Verworthy Wharf display. Verworthy Wharf display, and it's beautiful. You can imagine now these tub boats uh, lined up here in the chains that they were in and of course supplying whatever was needed here, probably coal I would imagine up here. When you said display, I heard you even say display, I didn't realize you meant display. Um, so I think that, so. that building over there, right? I guess so. I mean, this is totally unexpected. Oh, a bit boggy underfoot. Oh wow, Rebecca. This is like the museum. This is. Whoever's done this, thank you, this is wonderful. There's so much in here that we're gonna to come to in today's video, not least the, the design here of the tub boats with the wheels. So the tub boats they use had wheels, so they go up and down the inclines. And if you look closely, they even used um, plateways, sort of early railway tramways where it was just an L shape to keep the wheels guided. But as this was built sort of head on into the 1800s, they're obviously aware of these technologies. So James Green, the engineer, um, decided to use it for his tub boats. We'll come to more of that as we get to see some good examples, but oh, what a treat. So this is the Bude Canal. Now it was one of James Green's early engineering projects very much prominent in this area. In fact, we've done another video on a canal he made or constructed later in his life, the Grand Western. Now, when you look at the Bude Canal, it's cut almost into a cross shape. Now, there's a reason for each of those lines, if you were each of those cuts. But first of all, you find us on the northernmost one of those cuts, and it is actually referred to as the Bude Aqueduct. And this is just beautiful. This is such a good example of an abandoned canal, hardly untouched in 130 years or so. Yeah, this is wonderful. If it was full of water, you wouldn't know any different. No. Right? I mean, it's just bizarre. Oh, tantalizingly close. I, <laughs> right in front of me is just bog. And I really wanted to show you this aqueduct, Verworthy aqueduct, which is right there. It's like five feet, but it's so overgrown. I can't see any masonry, nothing. Um, I just can't step one foot further forward for fear of standing in two feet of bog. Um, oh, so close, but so far. Rebecca, this reminds me of like a log flume. It's that well defined. It's that well cut. It's thin. The, the tub boats used, and again, we'll come to this, but the tub boats used were- They look like log flumes. They look like little log flumes. They're five or six feet wide, 20 feet long, and they used to go in chains of, of you know, tubs pulled by a horse along this towpath, this very towpath. And um, yeah, it's like, a, you can imagine it, it's perfect. This is such a treat today. 
So we're now arriving at, right here, we're now arriving at the first junction. So we said this canal had four arms to it, or four points. Well, we've come along the northern one, and right there, looking that way, is the Holsworthy branch. Now, that was eventually what would kill this canal off, the arrival of the railways at Holsworthy uh, in around 1880, or maybe just before 1880, meant that, of course, this canal was no longer fit for purpose. So this is now the Holsworthy branch. And again, this section we're walking on is perfectly cut. It's still got quite a bit of water in actually. And we're almost at the point where the southern arm connects to us now. Now the southern arm is what the main arm of the canal is a main point. And it went down to Launceston or nearly at Launceston. Now we're not gonna do that. Number one, we have a lack of time. It's already one o'clock in the afternoon and we've already done the feeder and it's gonna be dark by four o'clock today. Yep. But we are gonna bring you any minute now some of the ingenious uh, bits of engineering on this canal we've been talking about for quite a while now. So James Green didn't like wasting water and he'd seen sort of 20 or 30 years probably of canals using locks and how much water that used for potentially one barge or vessel to go through. So he liked inclines and he really wanted to use inclines on this, which is one of his first projects, the Bude Canal. Now just up ahead of us, we've got our first incline of today called Veland Incline. The inclines were fascinating and they used plate ways with uh, the wheels on the tugboats. So the tugboats actually had wheels. So we're pretty sure we found the area where the water wheel would have been, the very thin cut here would have been perfect housing for it. Behind me there, you've got where it would have been the reservoir to hold the water to power this. So you'd have to imagine right now there'd be a 50 foot diameter water wheel right here. Um, I guess it would have been bottom fed and therefore attached to some gearing that would attach to the, the chains to pull the boats. What fascinating stuff this is, what landscape this is. On this canal, they used six inclines. Five of those inclines were similar to this one. So remember that, that's quite important for uh, the next incline. Now, as time went on, they had many engineering problems with lifting those tugboats in terms of chain snapping uh, or the gearing not working properly. And uh, yeah, here we are, right? We are now actually at the top of the incline. You can tell that. Another this is a sign. It's a steep slope and another sign. That is a stone there with some pinholes in it. Um, yeah, that's a stone with some pinholes in it, which is definitely from how they used to house the rails for the tugboat. So here is definitely one of the planes. I do love making videos about canals. It's often at the early science of the era. There was no sort of blueprint that they used. They came up with all these wonderful ideas. And here we are seeing James Green try something new to him and relatively new to the, to the world, shall we say. Rebecca, this is, um, the view that way is beautiful. Be beaud, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, See what I've done now, I've used the word beaud, the town did the beaud, and added it to beautiful. Oh, did you come Shopped up with off the... yourself? No, no, no I didn't. <laughs> Someone literally just texted me and said, have a beautiful day. Like, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> right, we're at the top of Hobbacott and there's a massive drop off in front of us. So you know what that means. That means another incline. This incline was very different to the others, potentially unique. So just in this field, I think we found the top of the incline. You've got a basin just there, possibly a hut built for them, the person or the people that uh, controlled the plane. And that side there, you've got the drop off of the edge. We're gonna go down this pathway here, which is permissive, and see if we can find some of the bits of infrastructure and why this is quite a unique incline plane. So why was this incline different to the others? Well, it was based on the mechanism that it used to get the tubs up and down the hill. So I think inside this hedge here, there would have been a shaft and it held two large buckets that could each take 15 tons of water. Now, they were used, attached to a drum, balanced, 
uh, and in the same way a water wheel would, they would pull the tubs up and down. They would then empty that water out of the bucket through an adit, which came out down the bottom of the hill. So we're just gonna have a walk down this incline and then regret it because we've got to walk back up again afterwards to get back to the car. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously we're now on uh, the final part of this journey. We're missing the entire southern section that went down to Launceston, largely on account of lack of time. It's now half past two in the afternoon. We need to get to Bude because we need to film some of the sea lock and the sand railway and all the bits down there. So we're heading down the incline here. The reason why I want to get to the bottom because I wonder if there's anything re that remains visible of the adit. So at the top, as I said, a shaft went down, straight down there into the ground, <clears throat> to the ground level with the buckets of water where it emptied them along and added. So here we are, bottom of Hobbercott incline and the two passageways in. I, I assume these were passageways in for an up and down nature where um, one was pulled up on a chain, one was pulled down. I think that's how it worked here. And I'm also wondering if down there I can see an outlet. I wonder if that is the outlet for the adit. It's very, very small, perhaps two feet high, one foot wide, but that could well be the outlet for the water. Might not have been that side I was looking at. Could well have been that side. Feels, feels fairly solid underfoot. Oh yeah. So. I think we found the outlet for the 15 tonnes of water that would have come down here as one of the buckets was emptied into the adit. So, have a scout down here. Just, just check the shots on the camera, look amazing. Pretty sure that was it. Let's try and get out of here. Clouds have caught us up, it's very wet. Well, it's not very wet, it's a little bit wet. Windy. Very windy, Bewed. We finally made it to Bewed. We haven't scratched the surface of this canal, largely due to the lack of light in the day at the moment. It's 3 p.m. now. We've done a couple of inclines and a few of the things that we really wanted to show you. There's a, such a lot more, but there is the old wharf just across the way. The wharf building, very beautiful. Oh, We're just gonna, Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. We're just gonna head out now towards the sea, show you the sea lock, and give you the main reason why this canal was built. This part of the canal is still in use and it goes two miles back that way to the first incline where that is that sort of end of the road for the canal. Now just ahead of us, if you can still hear us because it's so windy. It's really windy. Just ahead of us is the reason why this canal was first built. God, I couldn't even breathe in for a second because <laughs> it's so uh, um, It's such a choppy day. Even the bit of canal in front of us here is choppy and it's only a few hundred yards long. But um, yeah, ahead of us is the reason this canal was built in the first place. But will we get there? I don't know. But we're now walking on a railway. And this was a railway built for uh, small trucks to bring sand. So they transported sand up onto the canal there. Now, why would you do that? Because sand is sand, it's in abundance everywhere, isn't it? Well, no, because this sand was different. This sand contained quite a lot of lime, which I understand was acted as a very good fertilizer. So one of the big successes of this canal was its ability to provide lime to fertilize all of the local farms inland. And that was so much better than the roads they already had because it allowed it to be distributed all the way to Holsworthy, down to Launceston, and of course, it even imported coal from the south of England. Um, this is quite a beautiful landscape here. It's gorgeous. And we're now walking on some really dodgy looking old rails, which, as we say, brought the sand up to barge level. Just wonderful. Right, Bude Beach. We've nearly lost the light now. We've seen the beautiful sea lock back there, obviously reconstructed in the year 2000, I think. Um, now, the railway would have come down on here 
down the slope you can see in the distance and onto the beach and I wonder if they move the rails to take chunks of sand up each time I don't know who knows along the way right that's it from us yeah. there's so much more in this canal we haven't bought you due to lack of time so maybe another day we'll do the southern arm but there's not much access um, it's getting windier and windier we're just gonna go have a look at the beach um, we're but on the beach we're on, no, look I mean, the we're on the sea, we're sea. <laughs> <laughs> right as always thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed and you like this sort of stuff us waffling about old history click the subscribe button and we'll see you next sunday Bye.